The news of EV fires seemed to attract a lot of attention from the press and from the internet. Any incident of EV fires make their way around the world quickly. Just how fire prone are EVs? I heard the risk of EV fire is low, but how low? Is there any research to help answer this question? That's when I found EVFiresafe.com, an Australian-based organization who has a detailed and up-to-date repository of information about EV fires. All of the information presented in this video came from their diligent research, and here are the ten things I learned about electric vehicle fires. Let's kick off our exploration with the big picture. How many EV fires have there been in the world? According to EV FireSafe's extensive research, from 2010 to June 30th of 2024, globally there were a total of 511 verified EV battery fires. This number needs to be considered in the context that there are an estimated 40 million EVs on the road. I think it is an uncontroversial conclusion that the number of EV battery fires is small compared to the number of EVs. There was a spike in battery fires in 2021 and 2022, coinciding with the battery manufacturing defects involving the Chevy Bolt and the Hyundai Kona. The number of fires decreased in 2023 due to the recalls and replacement of the defective batteries. How to tell an EV from an ICE vehicle? If you come across a vehicle on fire, how do you know that it is an EV? While EV enthusiasts may be able to identify an EV with ease, the same cannot be said for the general populace or firefighters. EV FireSafe offers valuable guidance on identifying EVs at the scene. The primary way to identify an EV include asking the driver, checking the license plate, since in many jurisdictions EVs have special license plates, checking for any external badge that identifies the vehicle as EV or PHEV, and looking for signs of any orange high-voltage conduits and stickers that identify high-voltage components. The secondary ways to identify an EV include QR codes visible from the windshield or door frame, lack of a front grille, lack of a tailpipe, and presence of a charge port. It is also important to note that not every EV on fire involves a battery fire. Fire could occur in other parts of the vehicle. Take for instance a Model Y incident in Vancouver, where the fire originated from the dashboard area and was unrelated to the high voltage battery. For a battery fire to ensue, a critical catalyst is required. Thermal runaway. A phenomenon we will dissect in our next segment. Ever wondered how a battery fire starts? EV FireSafe paints a detailed picture of the chain reaction which leads to ignition. Within an EV battery, multiple cells form modules, and multiple modules form the battery pack. When a cell is damaged by heating, crushing, penetration, or overcharge, chemical reactions replace the normal electrochemical reactions, and generate heat as well as toxic and flammable gas. This exothermic reaction speeds up itself and produces more heat and more gas. This will also begin to heat up neighboring cells. As the gas pressure increases, the blast cap or the pouch will burst, and this appears as a dark cloud because it contains metal particles. The bursting creates a popping sound. Then. The flammable gas vents and creates a white cloud. As the gas starts to vent, there is a hissing sound. As oxygen mixes with the vapors of flammable gas on top of the heat being produced, ignition could occur. Upon ignition, 
the neighboring cells could also start to vent and ignite, creating a jet of flame. The white vapor cloud is quite dangerous, as under the right circumstances, it could explode without warning. The important takeaway is that thermal runaway is a chain reaction that has a pattern and a progression. Everything tend not to happen all at once. What causes battery fires in EVs? EV FireSafe pinpoints four primary culprits. First on the list, collisions or encounters with road debris. The battery pack's integrity may be compromised, setting the stage for potential fires. Second, submersion in flood water for hours to days emerged as another perilous scenario, particularly in coastal regions where salt water corrosion poses a threat to the battery. Battery recalls are the third cause. As EVs await repairs, they are at risk of fire. External fires, whether from building blazes or bushfires, is the fourth cause. External fire can encroach upon the battery pack from below or reach the pack by burning through the vehicle's body. Does charging increase the risk of EV battery fires? According to EV FireSafe, charging an EV does not heighten the risk of battery fires. EV FireSafe's meticulous research reveals that 18 to 30 percent, a minority, of battery fires occur during or within one hour after charging. For comprehensive guidance on combating battery fires while a vehicle remains connected to the charger, visit EV FireSafe's website for more detailed information. Let's juxtapose the distinctive characteristics of EV battery fires and conventional internal combustion engine fires. The website has a long list. I will only discuss the ones that I found interesting. For starters, EV's quiet nature poses a challenge for firefighters accustomed to discerning engine sound of the ICE vehicles. Additional precautions need to be taken to ensure that an EV does not move unexpectedly. EV fires and ICE fires tend to burn at the same temperature, and there is a misconception that EV fires burn hotter than ICE fires. When a battery fire occurs, it is important to have water directed at the bottom of the vehicle, since that is where the battery pack sits. This is different than fire suppression in an ICE vehicle. The amount of water required to put out an EV battery fire could be significantly higher than ICE fires. ICE fires tend to take around 4,000 liters. EV fires takes 10,000 liters on average, with some cases using up to 100,000 liters. Understanding these distinctions is pivotal for executing effective firefighting strategies. Is there a risk of electrocution from EV batteries? When you are dealing with an EV following a collision, people often think about risk of electrocution. EVs are designed with mechanisms in place to automatically disconnect the high voltage battery when the airbags deploy. However, first responders do not have any way of knowing if these mechanisms worked correctly. Many EVs have cables or mechanisms that first responders can either detach or cut to disconnect the high voltage battery manually. There is a big difference in electrocution risk between AC and DC power. AC current goes in both directions, and if you are holding one side of the circuit, the current will go through your body to find ground. For DC power, it only goes in one direction. In order to be electrocuted, you need to be touching both ends of the circuit. EV batteries, of course, deliver DC power. Throughout their research, EV FireSafe had not found any verified incidents where emergency responders have been electrocuted or nearly electrocuted from a direct stream of water onto a burning EV, submersion in a body of water, cutting into an EV during road rescue or from stranded energy. Since the risk is not zero, 
EV Fire Safe urges first responders to exercise caution, adhering to established safety protocols, and assume there is always a risk of electrocution. What are the different methods of fire suppression? Before doing the research, I thought the only way to extinguish a battery fire is by pouring water on it. However, there are actually three methods of fire suppression. The first method is to cool. This is to use water to knock down any fires and keep the battery pack temperature down and reduce risk of thermal runaway. The second method is to burn. This simply allows the EV to burn until it burns itself out and releases all the energy. The third method is to submerge. This is placing the EV into a water tank so that the battery pack is fully underwater. Each of these methods have their pros and cons, and certainly each jurisdiction will determine what is the most appropriate method for each case. What I found interesting is that one of the cons of the burn method is that the public or media may see the firefighters not doing anything. If there are any firefighters watching, please put in the comments, how much does public perception impact the way you deal with situations such as a vehicle fire? The specter of secondary ignition looms ominously even after the initial suppression of an EV fire. Cells that have not been completely burnt may still retain stranded energy. Since the battery pack had already been heavily damaged by the fire, there is a risk for secondary ignition. Secondary ignition had been recorded to occur at the site of the accident, while being transported on a tow truck or in a salvage yard. According to EV FireSafe, 13% of the vehicles they studied experienced reignition after initial suppression with some cases of the vehicles reigniting while on a tow truck. The longest recorded time between two ignitions on the same vehicle is 68 days. Thermal runaway could even happen days or weeks after an incident, even when there was no fire during the initial incident. Certain conditions in salvage yards can exacerbate the problem. When a partially burned pack is exposed to the weather, or a damaged vehicle is being moved with forklifts, further damage could occur to the pack, resulting in new thermal runaway. Concluding our odyssey, let's delve into an EV battery fire case that EV FireSafe studied in extreme detail. Basically, a Model 3 ran over a truck tail shaft at high speed, and it tore a hole through the battery pack. Thrown runaway did occur afterwards. One interesting piece of information I learned was that the Model 3 had a drop L panel on the underside of the pack, which is designed to melt at 660 degrees Celsius. The purpose is to allow the bottom of the pack to open if the battery is on fire, so that the firefighters can direct water directly onto the cells. I think this design should become universal in all EVs. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned a lot of valuable, data-driven information about EV battery fires. I can't thank EV FireSafe enough for doing this research. Please visit their website for a lot more valuable information on this topic. If you are a firefighter or someone who works with the firefighting services, I recommend you look into the training that EV FireSafe provides. There is so much on their website that I did not cover. Make sure you subscribe for future EV-related content. My name is Solomon, and I will see you on the next one.